Hey, Earth Science Kids, this is chapter six, number four. This is all about weather variables and changes. In other words, how two different weather variables will affect each other. Uh, some common weather variables are temperature, humidity, pressure, wind, speed, and direction, things like that. So how does a change in one affect the other? Obviously, this is a lot of beginning weather forecasting. So start with humidity. Well, there's two ways you can increase the air's or change the air's humidity. You can cool the air. Cool air cannot hold so much water vapor. So the water vapor that's in it then is a greater proportion of what water vapor it can hold. So the humidity would go up. Or you could just actually add more water vapor to the air. So if you have uh, a soaking wet forest, for example, where it's rained, as that's evaporating, that will be significantly adding more water vapor to the air mass over it. Either of these things may cause air to reach its dew point. And of course, the dew point is the point where the air is completely saturated with water vapor. Well, once it reaches its dew point, you can have clouds and fog form. So if you add any more water vapor or if the air is cooled more, some water vapor is going to have to condense. If it does that, on the ground, you will have fog. Up in the air, clouds will form. So if there is a great amount of warm, moist air cooling, the cloud has a good chance of producing precipitation. But just reaching its dew point and cooling beyond that, it produces fog or clouds. Precipitation is something else. So in terms of clouds, well, it has to be made of more than just water vapor. There has to be dust present. The reason, water vapor will only condense on a surface. If it condenses on the ground, we'll call it dew, and the grass is soaking wet, even though it never rained outside. That was condensation during the night. In the air, it needs something to condense on, and it will condense on tiny particles. If the air is completely clean, it, it inhibits, it makes it much harder for condensation to occur. So the particles that it may condense on might be smoke, dust, bacteria, spores, salt crystals, etc. As air rises, it expands because there's less pressure on it and it cools. Even though there's a drop in temperature, there is still the same amount of heat inside the air. It's just spread out over a larger area, causing the air molecules to vibrate slower. If it sinks again, it'll compress and warm until it has the same temperature it had before it rose. So air about to rise up over a mountain, there's a certain temperature as it gets to the top of the mountain because it's been expanding, it'll be much cooler. With If it goes back down to the bottom of the mountain, it would compress and become exactly the same temperature it was before it started its journey. So here's the idea. As a box of air rises, it expands and expands. The temperature is lowering because the amount of heat is now spread out over a larger area. And you'll see at some point, if it reaches its dew point, condensation will occur. So in terms of clouds forming, clouds will form when air rises and cools below its dew point. So air can rise for several reasons. If it is warmer, like a hot air balloon, it's less dense, up it goes. If it's forced up over a mountain, if it meets a wind coming from the opposite direction, that would be convergence, or if it meets a more dense air mass, it will have to rise up over that. So this would be air blowing over a mountain. So you might have moist air blowing in from the Pacific Ocean, and as it rises, eventually it reaches its dew point, clouds will form here, and the air will then go over the mountain and um, warm up to what it was before. However, if these clouds have had precipitation, all of the heat released by the water that actually came out of the clouds is no longer available to cool this air as it evaporates. So that extra heat, all this extra heat, which is a lot of heat, is added to the air as it sinks down. So you might find that on the leeward side of the mountain, the leeward side, 
you might have a small desert area form. This would be a great picture of wind coming in, sweeping up mountains, and as it gets to the top of the mountains, you'll see clouds forming there. Precipitation cleans the air. A lot of times people think it's because the rain is coming through air and somehow that'll clean the air and maybe that happens a little bit, but what really happens is this. The clouds are made of cloud droplets. One million cloud droplets equals one raindrop. So each cloud droplet contains one piece of dust. Each raindrop therefore contains one million pieces of dust. So sure enough, rain cleans the air. That's uh, relative to scale, size of a cloud droplet to the size of a raindrop. Whoa. When humidity is added to the air, it's hard to imagine this at first, but the air pressure actually decreases. The air becomes lighter when you add water vapor to the air. Now that's counter to much of what we hear uh, day to day, uh, you might hear uh, a baseball announce that a baseball announcer say that it's very humid out. The air is very heavy air. Well, it feels like that to the players because you can't evaporate sweat from your skin. But in fact, the air is quite a bit lighter when it's very humid. Okay, so an equal number of water vapor molecules take up the same space as regular air molecules. Water vapor is lighter than regular air molecules. Water vapor equals, well, 18 atomic mass units, and air is about, if you average it out, it's about 29 atomic mass units. So you can see water vapor is much lighter than regular air. So an AMU, well, that's an atomic mass unit. It's the mass of a proton or a neutron. Nitrogen has 14 AMUs, it comes in molecules of two with a total mass of 28 AMUs per molecule. Oxygen with 16 AMUs per atom weighs, okay, 32 AMUs. If you average them out, it's about 29. So every molecule of water vapor must kick out a heavier molecule of air. So moist air is lighter than dry air. This is the idea. So water, water vapor molecule would equal 18 AMUs, whereas the nitrogen molecule would be 28 AMUs. Air temperature and pressure. Air pressure is affected by temperature. As the temperature rises, molecules move faster, so they spread apart. So this lowers the density and the pressure. As the temperature increases, pressure decreases. So these things, these variables are opposites of each other. So as the temperature decreases, pressure increases. So air temperature up, air pressure down, air temperature down, air pressure up. So some other variables we can relate. With temperature increase, winds increase, there's generally greater pressure differences. Pressure decreases with temperature increase. Relative humidity decreases with warmer temperatures. Why? Well, because the air now can hold a lot more water vapor. Now, this is interesting. Dew point will increase. Why? Well, because the higher temperatures allow that air to evaporate more water into it. So even though the relative humidity is going down, the dew point, which is a measure of how much water vapor is actually in the air, the dew point is actually going up, usually. And all these variables are simply the way it usually works not the way it always works. Air temperature up, wind speed up. Air temperature up, dew point up, relative humidity down. Let's look at how a cloud might be made. All right, as air is rising, all right, you're condensing a lot of water vapor into it. The condensation releases huge amounts of energy, causing the cloud to grow tremendously and then the cloud begins raining, which starts pulling air down. And as the cloud becomes fully mature and is raining, all this downward motion generally begins to kill the cloud. Look at that. 
That is a fully developed thunderstorm. Now, the thunderstorm is a long way away, but we can see here the anvil shape to the top of the thunderstorm. When the thunderstorm reaches the top of the troposphere, right up here, it flattens out as it gets pushed against the lid of the troposphere. Temperatures start warming above that, so the cloud would be always more dense than that, so the cloud cannot go up any higher. So some review questions. Why will cooling increase air's humidity? What does cooling have to do with the air's humidity? Well, the temperature is um, going to tell you how much water vapor the air can hold. So if you increase temperature, air can hold more water vapor. If you decrease temperature, air can hold less water vapor. So in this case, if we're cooling air, it can hold less and less water vapor. So the amount of water vapor in it represents a greater amount. So. Is a cloud liquid water or water vapor? A lot of people, people would say water vapor, especially if you haven't listened to everything else I just said. But if you can see a cloud, well, can you see water vapor? No, water vapor is invisible. So if you could see a cloud, a cloud must be made of liquid water droplets. So when moisture is added, what happens to the density of the air? A lot of people would say it goes up. Would you still say that? I hope not. When you add water vapor, um, when you add moisture to the air, the density goes down. Why? Because every molecule of water vapor kicks out a heavier molecule of air. So why will warming decrease air's humidity? As the air warms, it can hold more and more water vapor. So whatever water vapor is in it represents a smaller proportion of how much it can hold. So the relative humidity goes down. How is air pressure related to temperature? Well, hot air, what's, what would follow that? Hot air expands, becomes less dense, and rises. So if it's rising, the air pressure is going down. So why does the air rise? What are four reasons air rises? All right, it heats up, rises for that reason. It tries to go over a mountain, rises for that reason. Two air masses meet, forcing each other up, rises for that reason, or it meets a more dense air mass and it has to rise up over that. Look at that, four reasons. How is wind related to temperature? Well, in general, when it's hotter, you have more energy available for wind to start blowing around. What happens to the relative humidity when air temperature rises? Okay, so when the air temperature rises, it can hold more water vapor, so uh, the relative humidity would decrease when air temperature rises. As air rises, what happens to its temperature? All right, so it might be rising because it was warm initially, but as it rises, it expands and cools. The word is adiabatically. It cools adiabatically, and that means it cools without actually losing any heat. The heat is just spread out over a larger area. As air sinks, what happens to its temperature and relative humidity? Well, its temperature increases um, adiabatically. All that heat is now concentrated in a smaller area. What happens to its relative humidity? Well, as it heats up, its relative humidity goes down because it can hold more and more water vapor. So whatever's there is a smaller part of what could be there. Hey, thanks for watching.